Hi, my name is Chris Nelson and welcome to the National Karate Online e-learning program. In today's segment, we're going to talk about predator defense. So how do we protect our kids from predators? And uh, I just think of, you know, I've been a parent for 21 years and um, since the birth of my first, I have four kids. The first one just really started to learn as they got older and started doing things and sports and activities and going to a friend's house that I couldn't always be there to protect my kids. And uh, what we learned is we need to be able to teach our kids to be able to protect themselves as much as they can. <clears throat> so today's segment is really just going to talk about some simple things that we can, as karate instructors and parents, teach our kids to help protect against child abductions. So I don't know, um, so parents, maybe in the beginning, it might be a, for the next couple of minutes, this might be a part that's maybe not quite as appropriate for young kids to watch. So if you want to pause it and have the kids uh, go into the room for a minute or two while I explain some things and then we'll bring them back, that, that I'll leave that up to you. Um, <clears throat> Well, I just, you know, think about, the, there, there have been a couple times um, in my 21 years of being a parent that um, we've gotten separated from our young kids. I remember being at a shopping mall at Woodfield, and um, I was helping, as I think we were shopping for kids' clothes, and I'm looking at prices, and I look up, and um, one of my kids is gone, and boy, that's, that's a, a scary feeling, and it took us probably five or ten minutes to be able to find where they were, and um, that's happened to me a couple times, as, as good of a parent as I always tried to be, and you know, I didn't even like letting my kids play in the front yard without me watching them, but, but it does happen, they get separated. And uh, what's scary about that is um, police tell us that predators, people who um, want to abduct children, people who want to abuse children, spend a lot of time calculating how they can best do that. So they will um, spend time in the mall and just wait for an opportunity and watching for a child to get separated or they're spending time at the mall watching for kids who are there by themselves. And we're not just talking little kids, right? Um, we're talking really um, teenagers and down are susceptible to being abducted. And there's kind of different strategies that predators use for those different age groups. Um, and I'm gonna go over um, kind of from 12 years and under today um, I could also talk to you about how to protect our teens. We'll do that maybe in another video. Um, but today it's going to be 12 and under. Um, so the first example I want to show you. <clears throat> I want to show you this is uh, Adam Walsh. And you probably know his dad. He's, his dad is the one who started America's Most Wanted. And the reason he started America's Most Wanted is because his son was abducted at the age of six. And tragically, what happened is a little Adam, when uh, he was six, went to the store with his mom, and his mom wanted to look at curtains or something in one aisle, and they're like, literally the next aisle over was video games, and some teenagers were playing video games, and Adam asked if he could go watch the video games. And his mom said, sure, and only separated for just a couple of minutes. And she came back, he was gone. And uh, later, they found out that, um, unfortunately, Adam was killed, and he was abducted. And um, the tragedy of that is, you know, it was a store full of people. And his mom was literally in the next aisle. And if she would have heard him yell for help or heard any uh, commotion, she would have been able to be there. Um, but somehow, the predator was able to get Adam to leave the store with him without any type of warning, without any yelling for help, without any fight. And, and please tell us that's pretty common because kids are trained and conditioned to be respectful of adults and uh, authority figures, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, that's, that's really the first lesson in this. We want, not, number one, we want to teach our kids that it's okay to say no to an adult. It's okay, it's okay to say no, uh, not to your parents, but it's okay to say no to an adult who's asking you to do something that you don't think is right. Uh, even if it's a relative or a babysitter or somebody that you know, if, if they're asking you to do something that just it, to the kid doesn't feel right, it's okay for the kids to say no. So we need to prep our kids with that, remind them, teach them. Every time I, my kids went on a sleepover or to a birthday party, we would sit down and go over the rules. All right, here's some things that we need to know. Number one, if someone asks you to do something that doesn't seem right, you know, we can say no to that. If someone wants to touch somewhere on your body that's the, where you would wear a swimsuit, Okay, that's off limits and we say no to that. And if that happens, you need to tell me right away. So those are just some of the things 
Um, you know, I could do an hour video, but I'm gonna try to try to keep it short. Um, uh, we'll, maybe we'll do a series if you want me to do that. Uh, but for the first one that we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about what, if your child was in that position that poor Adam was in, what could he do to, to help defend himself? So number one, we already said, when that predator says, come with me, the answer is no. And the answer is you wanna to fight to get away, all right? The second thing we wanna do is we want to enlist the help of all the other moms and dads and people that are in the area, and whether you're at a park or a shopping mall or a grocery store or you know out front of your elementary school, whatever it is, we want to get all those people who are there who would want to help, to help you. And how do we do that? We have to use our voice. We have to let them know that there's danger, that there's a problem. And then we wanna make it hard for us to leave. We don't wanna just walk right out. We're gonna struggle. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go over a couple of those things. So I'm gonna have one of my assistants come up here. Uh, this is one of my daughters, and um, she's gonna help us with this. And um, what I want to think about doing the first thing is um, we want to let other people know that um, you're you're in trouble, right? And one of the things that police tell us this happens this happened many many times is. The predator is pulling the child, and the child is crying and um, making a commotion, but other parents, other um, people who witnessed that said, well, I didn't do anything because I just thought it was the kid's dad, and we thought, you know, the kid was in trouble, and he was going to get a spanking or something. So we not only need to make some noise, but we need to be able to do it in a way that other people know that this is not my parent. All right, so this is what we're just going to do. We're going to say, help, this is not my parent, okay? So we're going to do that. And the other thing we want to do is, if I'm pulling you out, I don't want you to walk out with me, okay? I want you to struggle, all right? And so think about, you know, if you're a four-year-old or a five-year-old or an eight-year-old, and, the, you know, um, Hope's a teenager, so I have more, you know, she's stronger, but if she was younger, what we want to do is just drop weight. I don't know if you've ever had that where your two-year-old just dropped all the weight and it's like you can hardly pick them up. Well, that's what we're going to try to do. So when I'm going to grab, you're going to resist. So pull against me and I want you to drop all the way down. All right? Good. Let's try that again. So, um, by the way, if we haven't gotten your kids back, stop the video and get them back because we want them to see this. We want them to practice this as we do it. All right? So let's try that again. I'm grabbing, I just want you to resist and drop all your weight. All right? So now she's down there, and you sit down there, okay? Now, imagine you were in the shopping mall, and this child just did this. And this is where she, so now she's out of my grip for a second. You know, the predator might try to reach and grab again, but she's going to use her voice. She's going to yell, help, you're not my parent. Help, you're not my parent. Okay, so that just told all the other moms and dads that this is weird. So please tell us at this point, if I was the predator and she just yelled, help, this is not my parent, and she just dropped to the floor, at this point, most predators are going to be like, oh my goodness, everyone's watching me, I'm busted, and they're just going to leave. All right, so that's just simple thing, just a simple dropping and yelling, help, you're not my parent, in a public place, has now just made that predator get away. If that predator did persist, Right? Maybe it's at a park and there's not somebody right close. So we're going to need to fight for a little bit to try to wait for someone to come, come and get us. And then we're going to do, there's some things that we can do um, to fight against that. So number one is, um, I'm going to use this pad. You could use a couch cushion or a pillow, whatever you want. Um, but we, we're going to practice, we practice this with my kids, that if um, you're in a situation, the predator's trying to grab you, Okay, that you're gonna try to use your feet. So I'm coming to you, kick, 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 and you bend your knees a lot, and I'm moving over here, and I'm moving over here, and I'm trying to grab you, and I'm trying to grab you. If I'm not tight, and she's gonna punch, maybe hammer fist. Okay, we're just gonna practice fighting and continue to yell, help, help, this is not my parent, get the whole time that you're fighting. Okay, and sit down there for a second. And if they were to get a hold of you, Again, you just want to try to cling to something and stay on the floor. Help, this is not my parent. Help, help, okay? Imagine I'm in a Sears store doing this. It would look pretty weird, right? So, thank you, good job. So that is the first thing. So let's review that real quick. So, child abducts and grab it, whether you're this big or this big, and the first thing you do is you just drop. 
That wasn't a very good drop. Get up there again. All your body weight. Fast, fast. Good. And we need to practice this. So with your kids, role play it, role play it. Practice as you can tell. It doesn't happen naturally. They're going to have to do it over and over. And not just today, but you know, over the next couple of weeks to a month, we're going to keep practicing this. Okay, now she's down the ground. And we're going to yell, help, you're not my parent. Help, you're not my parent. Good. And if I try to grab you, you're going to be kicking or scratching. We always talk about this, you know, scratch their eyes, right? Whatever you have to do. Okay? And if they did get a hold of you, try not to go anywhere. Try to keep you on. Say, help, you're not my parent. Help, you're not my parent. All right, good job. All right, you can take a break for a second. Okay. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two. This is J.C. Dugard. I don't know, a couple of years ago if you followed this, but um, when J.C. was 11 years old, she was abducted from her school bus stop. And um, tragically, her stepfather was in the driveway. She was just a few houses down, and she, he saw the whole thing happen. He even tried to get on his bike and chase, but the, by the time he got there, the car had already driven away, and um, she was 11 years old, all right? And some tragic things happened to her. I won't get into details in case the kids are watching, um, but there's, there's some things we want to do to try to help protect against something like that. So imagine you're on a bus. Okay, so it all comes down to uh, yelling for help, and, and resisting, all right? So let's come back and let's, let's do a couple of resisting. <clears throat> so number one, when someone's grabbing you, pulling you, we want to uh, get what we call a, a resist and tug of war. So watch me start forward. So watch what she does is I pull her footsteps forward to get that anchor, all right? And now she's gonna pull we're going to have a tug of war. So I want you to practice this with your kids, all ages. Get used to this tug of war thing. So I'm trying to pull you, all right, and you're in a tug of war position, okay? Now, the other thing we want to do as soon as we do that is that hand should be up, right? And in case they try to hit you, which is pretty common, adductors will try to, you see this in rape situations too, not only are they trying to get you into a car or get you into a room or get you somewhere, but they're going to make you scared by hitting you. So as soon as we pull, let's try that again. We're gonna get that hand up. So pull, hand up. Bam, okay, so you're protecting. Then we wanna think about going on the offense. So she's gonna kick, bam, punch, bam, and then she grabs a fist and pull. All right, let's try that again. So anchor and hand up, okay, protect. Kick, punch, pull, all right, and then, then you run, right? And if they catch up to you, we're gonna do some of the other things that we did. Drop and keep the weight, yelling for help, yelling for help. Help, this is not my parent. So these are all just a couple of strategies that we can do to teach our kids to be safe. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do for today. We'll, we'll cover some other things, like what are the other lures, what are some other self-defenses that we can do, and what are some things that we can do to think ahead. But um, take some time, train your kids, because you can't always be there. So thank you.